Too wet to plow. <laughs> church at. Let's enjoy ourselves this morning. Let's have a good time. We're glad we're in church this morning. If we would this morning, we'll get our kids. We'll get our kids here this morning. Linda is here. Hi, Linda. They said that's a wet ring out today. They do it.
our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We say, keep God great and hands started. May the 19th. Everybody hear me okay? Does it, do we have any other announcements? Well, just that we canceled the baptism today. Wouldn't be proper to throw off the bridge, I don't think. <laughs> oh, boy, we put a rope around her different. <laughs> We had some birthdays last week, didn't we? Yeah, thank you, man. Do we have any birthdays today? Not today. <laughs> well, last week. <laughs> I do. Did you bake a cake for a bit? Yeah, right. Sure <laughs> 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 did. <laughs> Do we have prayer requests this morning? Remember Pastor Stafford. Remember my brother. He starts chemo tomorrow and radiation. Lungs working by it, so they said that his lungs have functioned and very good. So still keep them in your prayers. You know, that's something we that we really 
there's things you need to really be serious about. And when people ask for prayer, you should be serious and sincere. When, when, when someone asks for prayer, they want your help. They need your prayer. And, and when you pray, do it sincerely and, and pray that, that everything will work out the way that God sees fit. And I think about my sister-in-law, and I think about, well, why does, why does they, two sister-in-law, why do they have to lay there and suffer so long? But God has a plan for us. No matter what we think or what we do or what we see in this world, God has a plan. Well, now, look, here's his, her daughter and her, her, her fellow. They're in church this morning. They went to church with us last week. Good. Well, you see, Mel's plan was to get her daughter in church. Good. To think about those things. No matter how bad things look, there's, there's a reason for everything. Any more requests? Uh, Butch, I have a cousin. I got a phone call. She lives in Wisconsin. And uh, <clears throat> she fell and broke her foot. And while she was in the hospital, they did some blood tests on her. And she's got stage 4 cancer. And uh, she's, uh, she's a Christian. Uh, she asked that we pray for her. And um, she, uh, she's been a school teacher. And her name is Linda Kaiser. And so if we could pray for her and uh, put her on the list, I'd appreciate it. Remember last week, she won't graduate this week, and she called and said she was pretty stressed out. Super proud of her. Yeah. Remember my family? And I had a special one for you. Remember Grimace, Mom? Aunt Trina. See Becky in church Friday and tonight too. Yes. Anyone else? Unspoken? <coughs> Lord, would you like to leave us in prayer? <coughs> God, we thank you so much for your son Christ and assembling ourselves together in your name that we assemble as a church to offer up prayer requests and thanksgiving to talk to you and your son Jesus Christ and what we truly believe in for the congregation that's here today and the sincerity of their heart of unselfishness to have prayer requests for others, for families and friends, some that are sick, some that may be lost, some troubles in the world today, only thou knowest all things. To God, for those behind the doors that may have secrets of life, God, that through the prayer and the interest and the Moments of time we have in this life, Lord, that we do pray with sincerity for the remainder of the service, for those that take a part to, to sing, to lead, to testify the message. God, for the future of the church, your church, not, not mine, not ours, but thankful to be a part of it. And God, if any be lost, any need to bow before you and, and ask to be forgiven, God, that we open the door and Make the way very easy. In Jesus' name, I ask it all. And they do. Amen. Okay, if you want to go to your classes, we have. Okay. Once again, we say good morning to everyone. Morning. How are we doing? Beautiful days trying to write about. They'll come in. <laughs> We're going to start in the Old Testament a little bit, kind of go back a little uh, a ways to, to repentance, baptism. I know we, we're looking forward to following up on what the Bible teaches about being converted, about baptism. It may seem a little, uh, uh, well, it's all, it's all Bible, so what part you already know will remind you, and uh, if you don't know, it'll enlighten you. To know where you are in this way, in this time of life, that we can have the promise, though it's there, the promise is there, but have to inherit the promise of eternal life. Brother Gary, if you would, just bless our offering. You know, the first thing that bothered me, I'm pretty sure one of the things that bothered me, 
this and other deals are uh, separate from what the Shrine. I want you to use your help and use your power. Jesus Christ, Adam, and the Lord. And again, Father, we shall do whatever it takes to be placing you, Lord, in the Shrine. And let us stand help us to pray for the grave. Let's pray in Father, in Jesus' sure name. Amen. Sure. Amen. 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 <coughs> Back for me. I thought, what's that for them? They weren't Well, I've said that about the money. We got nothing to hide. Y'all want to know where it goes and what it is? You got the right to ask. Well, look. I just want to help you spend it. That's why we don't let you have it. I don't know how to be a part of it. Yeah. Try to help him, Hazel. He's mixed up. This I'm at 336. I want to speak a little bit about repentance or repentance. And in the Older Testament, the word that is used means sorry. Now, I'm not saying that it only means sorry. And the reason I clarify that is because God, in I think 6, 10, 11, different verses. I didn't write them or quote them all down. God repented. But God never sinned. Now you understand that God who is perfect gave us his son, but God has emotion part that he was sorry for man. You see what I mean? And if I go, and I will go into the scripture to explain a little further, it's like we have a child or we have a close friend and we see something happen that's bad, we can feel sorry for it. But if that child that you have does something wrong, then you're sorry that that child did wrong. I mean, it's just, it's pretty simple that if this is your children and they're wrong, then you would say, I'm sorry. But that doesn't forgive it. Now, the reason I bring this out, back in Genesis chapter 6. <clears throat> All the way, first book. I know, when I first started smoking at a very young age, very young, Dad smoked, and I started slipping his cigarettes. And, uh, then, of course, he's got older, you know, not quite as sneaking. And uh, they caught me. Dad says, uh, he gives me the warning about smoking. You know, I'm always saying, well, you do it. You do it. You know what I mean? It's like you tell your kids, don't cuss you. <laughs> but uh, I went on and my, my friend he said, I'll tell you what. He said, my dad caught me. And he said, when he caught me, I told him it was a habit and I couldn't quit. And he never said another word, so I thought I'd try that. <laughs> so then when my dad caught me the next time around, I said, Dad, I got a habit and I can't quit. He said, boy, I can beat that habit out. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I can quit. <laughs> or I won't get caught. You know, I'll be a little more careful. <laughs> so here in chapter 6, and I hope I, I get the verses right, God saw that the wickedness of man in verse 5 was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, so God created man. God put man on this earth. So God sees that every individual that he sees through man now is evil. In other words, he's not thinking of good things. He's not thinking of serving the Lord. He's, your mind is everywhere with the exception. So here's what God says and reminds you God is perfect. 
God has never sinned. God sent his son into the world. He never sinned. So God does not repent. And I'll show you in the Bible where it says he doesn't have to repent. In the next. Read the next verse for me. So you see, God is, is sorry for man's sin, okay? Now, how would you explain God God didn't have to repent, but he, he's saying, now, repented, what I'm saying back in the Old Testament, in Hebrew language and different languages, we have, there was different wording to explain. God could have said, I'm sorry, written as repented, okay? So he's sorry for man. Because he sees the incoming. So here, if you, you go a little uh, further, go, go over to uh, Exodus chapter 32. Next book. <coughs> I know it's in here. Chapter 32, Claire. Verse 13, 14. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants to whom thou swearest by thine own self, and saidest unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. All this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. Now, God's intentions, talking to Moses, if you read the chapter a little bit earlier, God's intentions talking to Moses, he's disappointed with the people. He's discouraged. You know, God, the reason and the reason we have emotions and feelings, God gave us that. He didn't just give us a body. He gave us a decision maker of right and wrong and how to do good, how to do better, or how to be punished, or how to receive in a, of what you you receive, or what you plan is what you reap, what you say, what you do. So God now is saying because of Israel or uh, and the future of it, he, what's the next verse? What's he say again? Verse 14. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought he to do unto his people. Now, he didn't sin... But God is saying, uh, these people have sinned. I, I, he thinks about how to put an end to sin, though he has a plan, right? Now, how do I verify the fact that he never sinned? That's over in the book of Numbers. I probably didn't write it down, but it's in there. In the book of Numbers, the scripture says that God, Numbers chapter 23, chapter 23, yes ma'am. When you get there, we'll read about verse 19. I'm going backwards because I want to lead up to our repentance. I want to lead up to... We're born in sin, and we offend people. We do things that are wrong in life, and we ask to be forgiven. It's called repentance. You can't put salvation before repentance. Now, here in, in chapter 32, or I'm sorry, stick with me, I'm I think I over-medicated my blood pressure medicine this morning. <laughs> Verse. Yeah. Now somebody read that. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. As he said, and shall he not do it? For as he spoke, I shall he not let it do it. Okay, so God Spirit. So God doesn't repent. God's 
God sent us, but God is the Spirit. They that worship Him worship Him in the Spirit of truth. So how do I get to this point in our life? Where do we come to that we must repent? Let's go to Matthew chapter 12. Get over here in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 12. This has to do with Jonah. Jesus is, is teaching him. You remember the story of Jonah. Jonah was spoken to to go preach to Nineveh because of the sins of the people. You go preach to them that they need to repent. That they need to turn back to God. Same message today, a different time. People need to be sorry. People are more encouraged to overcome with evil instead of overcome evil with good. So he's saying to Jonah here, he's giving a message to them through Jesus Christ is giving a little message to remind them of something. In Matthew chapter 12, we'll start here about somewhere about the verse. The preaching of Jonah. If I got it right, I'm really, man, I'm, I'm dizzy as Dean this morning. I don't get in the pulpit to complain. Don't intend to, but Stuff's kind of running together on <laughs> Verse 38. <laughs> Thank you. I know why I can't find it. I'm in Matthew 13. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the visitors. It's not usually like this. <laughs> Verse 41, Roy. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah and the holy greater than Jonah is here. Okay, can somebody add to the story of the preaching of Jonah to Nineveh? Remember how he tried to go another way, he went down into Nineveh, they listened to the preaching, mm -hmm. and then the king of Nineveh repented in sackcloth and ashes, so God spared Nineveh. This is what he's saying as today is. If people will listen to the truth, Jesus Christ, there comes one greater. So it goes to John. Remember John the Baptist? He's preaching and he starts preaching is repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. I don't get into everyone's personal life. That's none of my business. But I know that before you can be a Christian or during the process, you have to Repent of your sins. Now, you can't ask everyone that you've ever offended to forgive you of what you've said or done to them, right? So there is an authority that is a higher power, and that is God who sent his son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life. So, we come into the church age. You know, people are just not sorry anymore. Sorry they got caught. Well, in the most part, that's very true. So the all seen eye looks at people to say, you must repent. So you come, what do you believe in? Who can forgive you? And I put this to you as I did to myself. Who is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin if you ask? Jesus. Jesus Christ. If you don't ask, how can he forgive you? Right? You have to ask. You can't put the cart in front of the horse. You can't just buy a window in and be saved for eternal life. There comes a criteria, and that comes from preaching. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When people neglect, and this is not asking for you to hear me, but when people neglect the preaching of the truth, they neglect God's word. Right? By the word, by faith, you're saved. By the word. What is the word? 
The Word is Jesus Christ. The Word was made flesh in St. John 1, dwelt among us, the Word, Jesus Christ, and dwelt among us that we could see, that we know what the truth is. Do you know what the truth is? Did you have to ask God to forgive you? So you can't come up some other way. There's no other way to have eternal life unless you believe that God is who he is. How does that convince you? By the preaching, right? By the gospel. If someone does not tell you the truth or lead you up some other way, then you're the same as a thief or a robber if you try to get in some other way. The truth is all that's going to set you free. The history of Bible teaching, all the way from Genesis, right? Right up even to today, there's not a lie. God has never lied. God has sent prophets, preachers, teachers, God, the Holy Spirit of God, to tell the truth. Man is what has distorted the truth. Not God. Not God. God, God Christ never distorted the truth. Man has gotten off in other directions. Okay? Now, how do you believe that one's right and the other's wrong? Why is it so confusing? God is not the author of confusing because... <laughs> So you believe in this? Oh, yes. Oh, my heart and soul. That's exactly what I'm saying. You have to believe in this. It's not just a Scientology. You ever hear that? It's not just a cult. It's not a form or a fashion. This is what you believe, right? And I ask you this question. Do you believe in God? Yes. Do you believe in His Son, Jesus Christ? Yes. Do you believe that you were born in sin? Yes. That you were a sinner because of Adam's sin? Yes. Do you believe to have the promise of eternal life in your heart that you have to ask the perfect Savior and this is for you. You don't have to to ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins. Mm -hmm. yes. Have you asked him? Oh, yes. And have you asked him? I can't teach you or make you ask him to forgive you. That will come from his voice. You'll feel that voice. <laughs> He will. He is guaranteed that if you hear the message of what he said, that he's going to speak to you through your heart. He's not going to turn anybody away. But it's up to you to make that choice. Now we're we're you know we're stepping here into some very spiritual scripture here. If you if you look into uh, the Romans chapter ten. I'll go in that direction for a little bit. Romans chapter 10. This is what's sometimes been called Romans Road.
Verse 9. Is that pretty? Now, now, I've asked you to believe in this, right? I've asked you to take this, believe in this Bible. Now, he read what the Bible said. We went back to repentance. So he says, confess your sin, right? Did you ever steal anything? Did you ever lie? Did you ever cheat? Did you ask God to forgive you? Did you then be like Lawrence? Felt like you made a mistake, you did something wrong, you sinned and asked him to forgive you again, right? So you failed, but you're not a failure. You said the wrong thing and you're sorry. You say, I'm sorry if I offended you. And then you go to God and say, Lord, I don't want to do that anymore, right? So now, so you go to God, you confess your sin. You've been there, right? You confess your sin. Because you believe that he has risen from the dead. Do you believe that, look, I'm going to say this, what do you believe? Do you believe that Jesus Christ died? Yes. Do you believe he was buried? Yes. Do you believe that he rose from the dead? Yes. Ascended on high? Yes. Sent the Holy Spirit? That you could, so you believe that he lives, you can live also, right? So you have to believe that he resurrected from the... Now, did you ask him because he lived a perfect life, he is the Son of God and he never sinned, the perfect Savior gave you... And Now, you don't have to... Do you believe that he's touched you and asked you? You know, you don't see it. It's not me, it's not someone else. But that Holy Spirit, that Word of God, is it touching you? So you see, it's, it's got to be real because I feel it, right? So then you confess your sins, and he's got a part to say, I'll forgive you if you ask me, right? You feel pretty good right now. That I see you squirming them legs start this bad. That's right. That's right. Next verse. Somebody read that next verse. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's pretty good because we're going to get down to my part and then your part. Read the next verse, please, somebody. For the truth of faith, whoever believes on him will not be condemned. You ashamed of him, Chuck? No, that's good. Your wife know you're a Christian? Yes. Your brother? Yes. Your family up right now, they know you're a Christian? Because you're not ashamed of them, right? Nobody's ashamed to go to church, right? So you're not ashamed. So he's saying if you confess me, you believe in me, you won't be ashamed of me and I won't be ashamed of you. If you witness to me or you pray or you ask God and and you're not embarrassed about praying when you go out somewhere. You're not uh, slothful in, in the things of God. Uh, that's a witness, you see. So you're not ashamed of me. I won't be ashamed of you, right? Next verse. So, so whether you're Jew, Greek, Gentile, other nation, other, that doesn't matter, right? Okay, now it's going, it's getting right down to you. Whoever God's speaking to and, and your heart, because John preached repent and be baptized. But this has to come first, right? This, this is first, repentance. But you have to believe 
Rejection of God, rejection of Christ, not believing, unbelieving is lost. Lost in the world, lost in sin, cast into a lake of fire, judgment day, because you don't believe. Right? I mean, I'm just telling you what the Bible, I'm not telling you what I've learned or what I teach. I'm telling you, if I stay in this, I can stay out of trouble. So now you confess the Lord, you believe in your heart, <coughs> confess with your mouth, you believe in your heart that God's raised you from the dead. Here's your next verse. Start. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved from what? Yes. Saved from sin, right? You have eternal life. What are you saved from? You're saved from sin. You've been forgiven. Now I've got a clean slate. So then I get up and and uh, it's like the story of the guy that was at the baptizing. The guy was an old, ornery, foul-mouthed guy and he'd been to church, he'd been converted and they took him out in the water and it was winter time, it was super cold and his friend sitting there on the side of the bank watching all this and he drank with him, been to the bar and the preacher baptized him and he hollers out there and he says, Hey! Was that water cold? He said, no. He said, baptize him again. He's still lying. <laughs> I just like this past week. Oh, man. I say, and uh, I told him, I was already about the Bible. He was already about the I'll tell you, I, contention, I, understanding, let there be no envy, strife, bitterness. We do discuss a lot of different thoughts, opinions. That's why the Bible is here, right? But when it comes to getting out of line, there, there comes a lack of respect for other individuals. If you stay in this, whether you know whether I tell you, I can tell you the truth, what the Bible says. You may interpret it different. I don't know that you do, or that we don't, or that we do. But why fight over? You have to preach, tell the truth, and how someone you may get questions and get answers. And this is why. But when we get back to this. And we've had several ch through time. I can give you a brief of a message I've been studying, not for today. Christ's body is the church. He's the head, we're the body. The body is beginning to be broken. His body was never broken. On the cross, now think. His, his bones and his body was not like my in the Dickens day. He was there, right? The church, the body, is beginning to be broken. It's true. So, the truth is going to bring the body together. See, the truth fitly joins it together. Go ahead, Austin. You can see it all over. No, so, uh, no, no, I was just saying it was wrong. I just think of uh, keep it back now. Don't be taken of the Lord's supper bread and stuff. And the bread is representative of what? The body. Which was broken for you. Right. Okay, now I don't think it's talking about the bones. The truth. His body was broken. He yes. was beat, tortured, cut, beaten, 
Not the bones, and that's that's why I said the bones. Right? The bones were never broken. That's up on the just broken. That's good. But it wasn't bones. Oh no, I appreciate it. This is why we have a church of outspoken individuals, and it goes right to the point of discussion and bringing things out. I look at the body as the church. And then what I was referenced to, you see this church and this church and this church and this church. So the body has to come back together in unity, right? Okay, and he's right. The body was, there's no denying that he was whipped, hung on the cross, crown of thorns. I understand. Now, let me go back. Here's how you get this. Verse 14. So God sent Jonah, right? Mm -hmm. And then John, and then Christ, and Paul, Peter. So he sent that they could preach the resurrection of the dead, right? And the hope of eternal life, the cross, crucifixion. But I ask this question, do you believe this? You can say yes, and I hope that's true. But have you asked the Lord to forgive you of your sin? Because now it's been preached. Right? No denying that this has been preached. You become, now, has the voice dealt with you to say, you know what? I hear his voice. I hear that call. Or you may not hear it at audible, but is he calling? Is he calling? Next verse. Paul is not here. And she made a comment over the phone and talked about her being baptized. And she said, My my mother told me once that some creatures are sent and some went. <laughs> that stuck with me because the Bible says they are sin but I believe some just right without being you know blaming anybody that's their call right? I'm here I don't know. I 
I just I would assume you know that one was dead and one was resurrected. And, Can I add to it? I asked you him both. I know you did. Your genealogy of your flesh, don't matter who you are, your bloodline, doesn't matter where it comes from, that's not what enters in. Now, he had a glorified body, and I believe he had bones with him. That's what I'm saying. Those bones weren't broken. They had to be pure. True. Just like his bloodline from the whole... His thing. bloodline. Yeah, his bloodline was pure. Your bloodline... You're, we, we enter in by the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Your inheritance of who you are, whether Greek, Jew, whatever, that's not what saved you from your sin. <clears throat> Flesh and blood cannot inherit. Only what you believe. And then it comes along with that. That's what I'm saying. It goes against bone structure. You know, the bones, the skull, everything. Sand and all was regenerated, regenerated into another type of Christ. Well, it's a whole glorified body. And Roger's not, and we're not trying to confuse anybody. He resurrected. He was badly abused yes. and buried. He rose from the dead and then glorified his ascension. When we, we will be made whole. Yes. He's promised that. If there's no sickness or sorrow thing, we're made whole. Now, there's a lot of things out there that I can't really get because it's so perfect. It's such a great, I can read about it and try to picture what I can picture. It's Sometimes beyond my imagination, it gets so great. But I know I want to be there. Bless you, Dan. Can I ask a question? When he arose from the grave, did Mary know who he was or think he was somebody else because he had a glorified body? She recognized him later. She thought he was the gardener, but she was looking for him and not to be there and who he was, she thought that he was stolen. I just wondered because he had a glorified body no. that he was different. No, because he said to her, look at my hands. You see, there's a, there's a whole new outline of, is he going to have nail-scarred hands? I don't, my oh, opinion. Nice. And someone may disagree with his glorified body. Now, I believe he did when he resurrected because he had not ascended. Mm -hmm. They recognized. I'm just curious. Well, you'll probably be curious after the hard question. Let me ask you this. If you take a sledgehammer, you lie with Christ to a man's hand, and his feet, how long is he going to have broken bones? Well, from what I read in the Bible, it went through his hand, not his wrist. Right. Those people are show. Do you know how many little bones there are in your hand? No, just <laughs> probably read about it somewhere. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. They had to be some of them broke somewhere. I'm just saying there wasn't any of them broke. Right. 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 How did I get from re <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> it's not boring here, is it? <laughs> <laughs> when you say it's like nowhere else. Yeah. <laughs>
Flesh and bone. Did you hear it, Roger? No. After seeing his hand. And this was after his resurrection. So I was going to say about that. My mom said, you know, I'm going to go through the up. I got some missing, so. <laughs> No, that was at the grave site. And if you reference that out, she was saying, don't hold on to me here. Don't don't cling to me here is what he's saying to her. He's got a journey to make. I'm going to ascend. You see, he told Thomas when he was in the upper room, he told Thomas, he said, look, touch me. Yeah. He said, blessed are those who believe and have not seen. But Thomas had seen it. But I agree with the fact. Look, if there's no glorified body after we ascend, it's not true. The Bible's not true, right? He's promised us a glorified body. The people that age and the people that get sick, he's promised you a glorified body. A life of a glorified body. But do you believe it? It's not confusing when you when you narrow it all down. It's not confusing. Jesus died for your sin. If you repent of your sin, He's faithful and just to forgive you. And then we get into baptism. <coughs> John baptized. Others baptized. You've been baptized. Probably all of you here. Maybe so. If not, wait out a little bit deeper. Not today. <laughs> And it's not a tradition of man. This is the washing away, not of the sin that you would think, but it's a representation that I've confessed to the Lord Jesus Christ. He was baptized. And John baptized others. Do you believe in this or not? That would be up to you. Let's give God a great big answer.